Hi guys, this is Dave Marshall with the RC Air Marshall YouTube channel, and you are watching the Spectrum AR636 programming series. This is part 9, where we will show you how to use the Safe Model Builder application on your PC. Alright, in order to use the Safe Model Builder, we'll need to go back to the folder where we unzip the Safe Model Builder file, and go ahead and open up the Safe Model Builder application, and we're going to load the... Uh, SRM file that we just exported from the AR636 using the Spectrum Programmer. We're going to go and load that file up. And again, uh, on my particular PC, that's under Document, Spectrum, AR636, and Exported Models. Uh, wherever you save that to, uh, using the Spectrum Programmer, that's where you're going to find it. Uh, so for me, uh, that file is right here, the Reckham Roy Old Crow P51 save file. We'll go ahead and click open. And uh, what we'll see is now uh, we have the model name, uh, which we have called uh, Reckham Roy Old Crow P51 safe. And what I want to do is I'm going to add a 0 0.1 to the end of that. Right, and that's going to allow me to differentiate this model from the one that uh, that we saved with the Spectrum uh, programmer software, because they are going to be different. When we're done uh, setting this up, the SRM file will have all of the safe information uh, included in the XML code that makes up an SRM file, but that's a, a little bit of geeky stuff there. So we're not gonna get into that too much. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and run through all the tabs and make sure that everything is set up correctly. Now, uh, up here at the top again, uh, we'll go back there just for a second. We do have a receiver serial number, uh, and that is the receiver serial number that was a part of the SRM file uh, that was exported by the Spectrum Programmer. If we want to set this up where we can load it into any other uh, AR636 receiver, we could go ahead and blank that out. And when you import it into the Spectrum Programmer, it would allow you to take that file and import it into any AR636, which is nice. Now, um, uh, when we get down here to all of the tabs, uh, the first tab is going to be the mounting which is going to allow us to set up the orientation of the receiver. I want to reiterate from a previous part of the series that two of the most critical settings that we're going to make in the AR636 is going to be the mounting orientation and the servo reversing. If you get those two things wrong, you will crash your airplane. Or better said, the receiver will crash your airplane. So we want to make sure that our mounting orientation and our servo, reverse, servo reversing for the ailerons, elevator, and rudder are set up correctly in the receiver, and we will leave everything normal in the transmitter, right? So we want to not be re reversing anything in the transmitter. It will all be done in the receiver, right? For the purposes of this video, we're going to be setting up the receiver with a mounting orientation of the pins facing forward in the aircraft and the label uh, facing up. So we're going to go pin towards nose, label towards sky. All right, and it will show you a picture of what the receiver should look like as it's sitting inside the airplane. All right, now that we're done with that, we'll go over here to switch setup. And here we can either hit this uh, this checkbox so you can either use one or the other right you can either use safe select behavior uh, and initially we can leave the safe select unassigned and what this will do is we can bind it just like a safe select airplane that we would get with a bind and fly model so you would plug in the bind plug uh, and then apply power to the receiver and then unplug the bind plug um, and continue with the binding process and that would uh, you know initiate the receiver in safe mode so uh, you, you could follow the exact same binding procedures that you would with any other bind and fly model now what we want to do is go ahead and use standard AR636 flight mode switch 
uh, which in our case we were setting to aux2. Uh, flight mode with safe on is going to be flight mode 3. Uh, and here we want to allow the safe functionality to be, to be turned on and off through the binding process. We are going to leave that unchecked. And safe features are enabled overall. Uh, choose which ones in flight modes. And we are going to leave that checked. So just to reiterate, we're going to use the standard AR636 flight mode switch. That flight mode switch is going to be set to AUX2. We're going to have safe on channel 3. On flight mode 3 in the receiver and we're going to leave the safe features turned on and enabled all right so let's go over here to flight modes now this is where we're going to actually adjust uh, which flight modes are going to do what now we want safe to be on flight mode 3 so we're going to go ahead and turn on our self leveling we're going to turn on our bank angle limits we're going to turn on a throttle to elevator mix and we're going to turn on a panic switch. All right, and everything here looks pretty good. Uh, the one thing I am going to change is I'm going to change the down angle to a 20% uh, angle limit. All right, so we've got 45 degree bank angle limits to the left and to the right when we're in flight mode three, which is our safe mode. We've got a 45 degree uh, up elevator limitation you know so we'll be able to climb but we have a 20 degree uh, down elevator uh, limit which is going to prevent us from just nosing it straight into the ground now can you still crash an airplane in safe yes you can you know 20 degrees down is still plenty enough to get it into the dirt but it should be enough where uh where you can still, you know, recover the plane, you'd be able to see, you know, what's going on. Now, the other thing that we're going to set up here, we're going to go ahead and enable the panic button in all three flight modes. So even in flight mode one, with the gyro turned completely off, we're still going to have that panic button enabled. So if you were to hit that panic button, it's going to self-level the aircraft the same way that we would see in, say, the Apprentice S or any of the Apprentice models, the Apprentice Mini, Apprentice S, uh, where it doesn't matter which mode we're in, we hit that panic button, and it automatically self-levels the plane and, uh, and gets us out of trouble. So we want to have the panic button enabled in all three modes, and we're going to set up flight mode three to specifically be our safe flight mode, or beginner mode. All right. So over here in the panic mode button, or the panic mode tab, we're going to set up a panic switch. So we already have aux2 as the channel that our uh, receiver is going to respond on for changing the flight modes within the receiver. So we're going to set up our panic on aux3. Uh, now this first button, I don't know why, but this mystery mini apprentice setting is just good to have checked. I check it on every model that I work with, so it's probably a safe assumption that it is good to check on every model ever. Um, now, the other thing that I like to set up is uh, if you've ever set up a an apprentice S or even a mini apprentice, as a bind and fly model on any other radio. So say setting up an apprentice on like a DX6, for example. Uh, the, the button that you have set up for panic would normally have to be reversed in the transmitter uh, because of the way that it responds. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click this little guy. And what that does is it alters the programming of the receiver just a bit. So we don't have to reverse it in the transmitter. It's already reversed inside the receiver. And you can read that here. Reverse the function in the receiver so that you do not need to reverse it for a button on the transmitter, which is great. Uh, and the panic envelope allows us to set certain bank limitations while the panic button is actually being pressed. 
Now, because you don't want to press the panic button for very long, uh, we're going to go ahead and set these limitations to be even more restrictive when, uh, when the panic button is pressed. Right, so once you uh, hit the panic button, we're going to limit the airplane to a 10 degree uh, right, left, or up bank angle limit and a 5 degree down angle limit. So uh, we want everything to be nice and level uh, so you can get control of your airplane and recover it. Next, we're going to go over to the throttle and elevator mix. Um, what we want to do is we want to set up a um, a linear mix. Now you can set up two different mix types. You can have one that's constant, where it'll apply, uh, apply maximum elevator input if the throttle is anywhere in the low or high ends, or we can do a linear mix where you know between a certain throttle percentage and uh, you know and your high end throttle percentage the elevator will will travel and give you more up input the more um, the more throttle you apply but the idea is that if you're jamming on the throttle you're you know at some point you're likely trying to get out of a bad situation so when you're in safe mode your uh, the attitude of the plane as you apply more throttle We'll give it some nose up and it will cause the airplane to lift. So when the throttle is below 10%, we're not going to apply any um, elevator input. And when the throttle is above 90%, we're going to go ahead and apply some elevator. Now it says positive value points the nose down, negative value points the nose up. So if we want the nose to go up, uh, with with more throttle, we'll go ahead and set this to say negative ten, and then we can test out uh, how all that works once we uh, once we get that in the airplane. But these are things that you'll have to kind of play around with and decide for yourself. You know, how much elevator do you want to apply as throttle goes up and down? Uh, for me, I actually, I, I like negative 10. That gives me just enough elevator input to give me a little bit of lift with, uh, with throttle input uh, with, the, um, with the safe mode enabled. <clears throat> All right, next we'll go over to the advanced tab. Now, for the most part, I leave the, uh, the advanced tab alone. Uh, the heading gains, you know, pretty much only apply... Uh, for the safe modes, I know it says like flight mode one, two, and three. I just leave them at uh, uh, leave the gain at eighteen percent for roll and pitch, all set to absolutes for flight mode one, flight mode two, flight mode three. I just leave those alone. Now here we don't know at this point what this value needs to be so we'll set it at negative one for no trim at all um, so what i want you to uh, to understand this attitude trim this is in the event that you have to mount the receiver uh, some way other than flat in your in your aircraft so if your receiver is mounted flat uh, and you calibrated it on a flat surface what it believes to be straight and level will be the attitude that it was in at the time that you calibrated it. Um, now, setting it to negative one and applying zero trim assumes that the receiver is going to be mounted in the airplane nice and flat. If you do have to mount it at any type of an angle, these are some numbers that you're going to have to play around with. All right, so you have to read, um, you know, the descriptions for both roll and pitch. 
So say, for example, we had to mount the, uh, the receiver and the front end was lifted up by, say, 10 degrees. Now, what we need to look at is, say, units are approximately 1 one hundredth of a degree. So for every degree, we need to have a value of 100. So for a 10 degree lift on the front of the receiver, we need to tell the, uh, the attitude trim that the front has been lifted, right? Now, this says negative values lift the nose side of a receiver and positive values lift the tail. Now, if the front is lifted, then straight and level will actually point the nose down. We want to lift the front of the nose, or we want to lift the nose by roughly 10%. The way that we would do that is negative values lift the nose. We need to go 10%. So the value for pitch would be negative 1,000 or somewhere around there, right? In the event that you need to change this, pay very close attention to everything that's said here. You know, that the values are approximately 1 one hundredth of a degree and pay attention to the notes off to the side of how we, uh, you know, the negative values, you know, for roll, negative will take it to the left, positive will take it to the right. For pitch, negative values lift the nose, and positive values lift the tail, uh, or point the nose down, all right? But, like I said, we're going to go ahead and leave both of these values to negative 1, and assume that the receiver is going to be now mounted nice and level inside the receiver tray of the airplane. And lastly, we're going to look at the AR636 model setup version. Uh, we want to leave it on firmware version 2.xx. And what we're going to do at this point is we are going to save <clears throat> the, um, the new SRM file with the save settings uh, uh, modified. So we're going to save as... Now uh, you could save, but because we don't want to save the exact same file name, Right, because that's the one that's already in the uh, the program or in the the Spectrum programmer. We want to save it as a new file. So we're going to save it as, and we're going to call the model name. And go ahead and click there, and We're going to call that v0.1 because we haven't uh, tested the airplane yet or we would call it a version one of this profile but you know for uh, for this one until we test it uh, now we have the old crow p51 it is now a safe profile and we're going to call it version.1 we're going to go ahead and save that and now uh, because we haven't made any further modifications we are pretty much done adding the save settings to uh, to our SRM file. At this point, we can go ahead and move on to the next part, which will be importing that back into the Spectrum program. Stay tuned. All right, guys, so that covers you how to use the Safe Model Builder. Be sure to stay tuned for part 10, where we'll show you how to import the new file that you created in the Spectrum Model Builder back into the Spectrum Programmer software.